Welcome back to this stupid show. I am happy to announce that I've made some changes. Get ready to take a look at the greatest Trek episode of them all, one that slays and conquers any and all who dare challenge it. One that... Wait. Uh... <laughs> ah, I think it worked. Ah, I can see again. Okay, ah, I will not miss that place. Uh, so many goatees. Okay, are we, are we... Wow. Okay, we're already recording. Um, it says, what am I supposed to talk about? Uh, well... Well, that's really on the nose, but it makes sense. Also... I don't have time to write anything else. So we will once again stay with Star Trek The Original Series and examine the Season 2 episode, Mirror, Mirror. I hope that Mirror Me didn't change things too much. Welcome to Sci-Fi Wire's Agonizer Vintage 2309. No, no, that's wrong. Let's take that again. Welcome back to Sci-Fi Wire's Warp Factor Classic Blend. Engage! Prepare for a mission briefing or you will be put to death! Wow! Mirror Me wrote one harsh script. You don't want to know where that was going. Um, this episode first aired in 1967, but that's no excuse. If you've never watched it, then prepare to be destroyed. Uh, shields up, phasers set to kill, and red alert. <coughs> Guys got issues. The blue dot headed Hawkins are being visited by, you guessed it, James Tiberius. Now he's trying to make a deal to mine dilithium, and it is noted that he doesn't use force to get it even though he could. Kirk, Scotty, McCoy, and Uhura try to beam back to the Enterprise, but an ion storm messes things around, and they end up on, for lack of a better way to say it, an evil version of their ship in an evil version of their universe. This is the ISS Enterprise of the Terran Empire, and you know that everyone is evil because Spock has a goatee, an evil salute, and uses an agonizer to torture poor Lieutenant Kyle. Kirk and company play along with the evil salutes and pretend like they belong there, but it is clear that they have ended up in some kind of parallel mirror dimension. Mirror, mirror. Get it? Yeah. They have to figure out what happened with the transporters and also how to stop the Enterprise from destroying the Halkins, who may or may not go on to destroy them. Mirror Chekhov tries to assassinate Kirk, which is simply how they operate there, and Uhura has to deal with a Randy Mirror Sulu who wants to have his way with her, which is also how they operate there. In the Prime Universe, Mirror Kirk is going insane and Prime Spock locks him up. Spock! Back in the Mirror Universe, Prime Kirk is getting cozy with Mirror Kirk's Mirror Paramour, Mirror Marlena Moreau. He resists her advances, but yeah, right, not really. Kirk gonna Kirk, doesn't matter if he's Mirror or not. It's a giant roundabout of betrayal, mind games, and diversion as everyone plots and schemes against each other. Also in the mix is something called the Tantalus Field, which is a machine that can be used to erase your enemies from existence with the touch of a button. It's right there in Mirror Kirk's quarters. Kirk, McCoy, Uhura, and Scotty just want to get the hell back to Kansas. Mirror Spock eventually mind melds with Prime McCoy and learns the truth of what's going on. At this point, he also knows that the Hawkins will overthrow the Terran Empire in approximately 240 years. Mirror Spock says he cannot change the future, so Prime Kirk tells him that he can change the present. One man cannot summon the future. But one man can change the present. Be the captain of this enterprise, Mr. Spock. He also tells him about the Tantalus Field. Very good. They have parting words before Prime Kirk and the Prime Gang transport back to the Prime Universe, where Prime Spock, as we saw, recognized what was going on immediately with Crazy Mirror Kirk. Prime Marlena Moreau reports for duty, a lieutenant and not at all a captain's woman, as she was in the Mirror Universe. Kirk is weird about it, but when questioned, he only says she seems like a nice, likable girl. Kirk on a Kirk. She just seemed nice, likable girl. 
Tukat! His eyes uncovered! Does this episode add all kinds of secrets and lore to the canon of Trek? Are a Kelpian's threat Gangula the best part of any meal? You should know what you're looking for in a Kelpian. Ew. Oh, I, uh, a big yes, followed by I don't care to find out. All of Trek's many adventures in the Mirror Universe begin here, with Trek shows taking place after this as well as before this, returning to the Mirror well often. The first return was in Season 2 of Deep Space Nine in the episode Crossover, where Major Kira and Dr. Bashir wind up in the Mirror Universe. The Intendant, the slinky, snaky Mirror Kira, explains that because what happened in Mirror Mirror with Mirror Spock, the Terran Empire fell and a Klingon Cardassian alliance came to power. They enslaved humans and everything just kept on being awful. That episode also featured this. <laughs> DS9 would go on to feature the Mirror Universe four more times. Voyager never ventured there, but Tuvok did show up on DS9's second visit in the episode Through the Looking Glass. Star Trek Enterprise took us back to the formation of the Terran Empire in Season 4's In a Mirror Darkly, where they begin by changing the famous scene of First Contact from the film Star Trek First Contact. It's more violent this time. Mm -hmm. Not good. Star Trek Discovery probably went more all-in on the Mirror Universe than any other Trek series in their first season, and we're gonna sound another red alert for spoilers here, just in case you haven't watched that series. It's still kinda new, so I'm going for it. If you haven't watched it yet, you're gonna get spoiled. Okay. Captain Lorca of the USS Discovery turns out to actually be from the Mirror Universe, and he brings the entire disco crew there for several episodes. Agonizers are used frequently, and the Terrans are led by Mira Philippa Giorgio. Mira Giorgio ends up back in the Prime Universe and stays on the series. Lorca does not. This is one of many original series episodes to include Lieutenant Kyle, who can later be seen in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, serving on the bridge of the USS Reliant. He's a commander in that one. One thing above all, if it were not for the interference of Kirk and the choices of Mira Spock, the Terran Empire would never have fallen. This is why you should never trust Vulcans, except when their ears are baked into a cake made with okay, nope, 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 I'm not saying that. I didn't write that. I didn't. That's also not true. It's not true. I love Vulcans. I love. Mirror me. Damn you. Earl Grey never fails. Blood wine is always victorious. <clears throat> and. Mirror Mirror is also victorious at giving us classic quotes. That is disgusting. Also, if Mirror Me is in the Terran Empire, he would hate Klingons. So that makes no sense. What? Uh... Prime Kirk calling Mirror Spock a man of integrity in both universes is a great moment. And every moment of Mirror Kirk screaming is also great. can't beat it. The exchange of the episode, however, does beat it. In the final one between Prime Kirk and Mira Spock, Prime Kirk says, In, in every, every revolution, revolution, there's one man with a vision. Captain Kirk, I shall consider it. Consider it he does. The power dynamic of the entire Mirror Universe is completely altered by this exchange. Blood wine is always victorious! except in a fight with Earl Grey. Doctor, it is time for answers. The Mirror Universe will no doubt continue to play a large role in the Trek universe. Jean-Luc Picard has never visited it on screen, but he could always take a detour there to see how things shook out over there after the humans triumphed in DS9 Season 7, maybe on Star Trek Picard, 
be a logical place. Maybe not season two, but season three? You never know. The mirror universe concept is also burned into the DNA of Star Trek Discovery, having played such a big role in the first season. The character of Emperor Giorgio is still around, still making trouble, and set to receive her own Section 31-based spin-off show, and she went along for the ride to the distant future with the other regulars for season three of Discovery. The spirit of the mirror universe will likely follow her wherever she goes. She's utterly fascinating to watch as a character. Speaking of which... Pulaski Watch! Pulaski Watch! Dr. Pulaski is not in Mirror Mirror, but she is Picard's true soulmate. I stared but... What? No! 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 Damn you, mirror me! Damn you, damn you! This, this, this is the unkindest cut of all. This, 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 this! Damn you, mirror me! One viewer called this too! They said they saw Pulaski watch coming! They saw it! They saw it! And I couldn't stop it! Damn you, mirror me! Damn you from hell's heart! You have stabbed at me! Picard needs Bev! Hailing frequencies open. Our hailing frequencies are now open, but I don't care what you have to say! Alright, this has gone on long enough. I'm gonna erase this next part. Oh, and definitely that. Okay, um, just be sure to share your thoughts on Mirror Mirror as well as the Mirror Universe in general. Also, be sure to call out other episodes you'd like us to feature. You already have been and it's been great. One viewer has an exciting triple base triple play idea, and if we can figure out how to do it, we will. Now, what did he change Blue Skies to? Ion Storms? No, I see he must have run out of dark creativity because it just says... Blue skies, go f yourself. Well done. Well done with that one. Okay, well, I'm just happy to have made it back and happy that he was somewhat contained for this entire week, except for that body over there in the corner. Just saw that. Not good. Um, until next week. I think I've been developing a taste for this. 2309, there is no finer vintage. <laughs> Ah, ah, Mirror Me has left one final message. Let's see. Dave says hello. All right. Dave's gonna, Mirror Dave is gonna try and pull some kind of Mirror Jennifer Cisco, isn't he? Even, or even worse, a, a Mirror Burial. All right. Ion Storms blowing at me.